Hey guys, Georgia Soundtracks here. In this week's video, we're going to talk a little bit about how these locomotives are able to be started up. Uh, there's a lot of people like to have the locomotives quiet when the layout comes on. We're going to talk about how to do that and the differences between starting up a steam and a diesel. So let's get started. So first up, we're going to talk a little bit about diesels. Now, when you put a uh, Soundtrack Tsunami 2 equipped model on the track, for the first time, the sound's going to automatically power up. So to show that, I'm going to take power away from this model for a second by tipping it over. Then once we set it down, you can hear that startup sound as that locomotive goes through its startup process. So now with my throttle, I can move them forward. I can move them backwards. Blow the horn, ring the bell. All of that's gonna happen, but the sound of the prime mover fires up as soon as track power is applied. Now, as we've discussed again in the past, function five is my RPM plus, so I can manually notch up the diesel engine, and the six key will then drop the prime mover down. Now, the function six key will also shut down the prime mover. So think of it this way. When you're in idle and you go to shut down, when you press the F6, that's an RPM minus. So we can go through and shut the prime mover down. But what happens if we want the locomotive to stay quiet upon power up? Because you can imagine if you have a fairly large layout, if every one of your locomotives starts up as soon as track power is applied, that can be a lot of sound very quickly. So, for example here, I'm gonna take my Missouri Pacific GP15. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna tip it over, and then when I set it back down on the track, you notice that it also does not start up. Now when I grab this locomotive throttle, you can hear, I can blow the horn, I can ring the bell, but the locomotive's prime mover has not started up. And that's because I've disabled that in CV114. So that means I can manually start this up. Now, as we talked about, the F6 key is RPM minus. To start up the prime mover, we're going to use the RPM plus. So off to idle is considered an RPM plus. So when I press the F5, you start hearing that low pressure alarm bell, and you're going to hear that prime mover starting up. So now again, as you know, we'll have, you know, motor control in the forward direction, motor control in the reverse direction, and of course we have horn and bell. So this is one way that you can have your locomotive stay quiet when you power up your layout. Now let's take a look at steam. Now steam's going to be a little bit different, so let me clear this up. We'll be right back. Now when it comes to firing up a steam locomotive, steam locomotives take hours and hours to fire up. So the way this works is you start a fire in the firebox. The firebox is hot and starts to heat the water. The water boils and creates steam. Now you can imagine with thousands of gallons up here in the boiler, that's gonna take a long time, sometimes two to three to four hours. And depending on the locomotive, sometimes even longer. Now, when you put a Tsunami 2 decoder on the track, the sound is going to automatically fire up just like you see here in this steam locomotive number 1460. So you can hear the blower, you can hear all the other sounds like the air compressor, stuff like that. And of course I have whistle control, bell control, all of that. But now when I mute this locomotive using the function 8, you no longer hear the sound. But notice this locomotive over here is not making any sound. And that's because we've enabled CV113, which is called quiet mode. The quiet mode works by A, after X number of seconds, the decoder will self-mute with all functions off and in the static state. So when the locomotive is not moving and all your functions are in the off condition, your decoder will self-mute. Well, when track power comes up with a steam locomotive, if that condition is still met once your DCC system fires up, then the locomotive stays mute until you do something. So in this case here, 
We're going to grab my locomotive. I'm going to press the zero key to turn on the headlight. And you're going to notice that the sounds are now back. Now when I turn off the light, just like I did, I've set CV113 to a value of 10. So after 10 seconds, this locomotive is essentially going to self-mute. And there it goes. So once you turn on a function, like I said, the headlight or it can be blowing the short whistle with the F3, this sound will stay on until the 3 is set to the off condition and all other functions are in the off condition. So when I blow my short whistle again, now we wait 10 seconds and you're going to hear it self-mute. And there you go. So with steam locomotives, like I said, they take hours and hours to start up, but if you want your layout to be quiet, I encourage you to look at CV113. Now the value of CV113 equals the number of seconds that the locomotive will self-mute after all functions are turned off and the locomotive is sitting still. Now if I was to start moving the locomotive, you'll notice that the sounds come on back even though all my functions are off. When I bring the locomotive to a stop, again CB113 set to a value of 10, it's going to wait 10 seconds and then you're going to hear this locomotive mute. So guys, I hope this has been helpful for you. Be sure to check out the user's guide at Soundtracks.com under the reference tab and click on manuals and use the Tsunami 2 user's guide and it'll teach you all the cool things you can do with our Tsunami 2 decoders. Model Railroaders Reader's Choice Award winner, two years running for favorite sound decoder. So guys, thanks a lot. And if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to us at support at Soundtracks.com.